You are listening now to A Word of Faith with Bishop Macedo. Thanks be to God, may the Holy Spirit open your understanding, your spiritual understanding, your understanding, so that you may understand His will for your life. And this is very important in regards to our relationship with God, because how can you have a relationship with someone that you do not know, if you do not see, if you can't touch? You don't hear, but you cannot understand it, right? So, in order for this to take place, you need, you need to prioritize, you need to prioritize God's kingdom above your personal dreams here on earth, above your personal projects. First, God must be the one in your life. He must be the first one. And the altar is exactly the place when the person comes on the altar. When the person comes on the altar, it's not simply for them to make their dream come true. It's not for their life to be better, for their life to be of abundance. But above all, is to receive God's Spirit to receive the Spirit of God so that He may direct and guide our ways. Look at what Jesus said. He says, Therefore I say to you, do not be anxious for your life. Do not be anxious for your life. What will you, what will you eat? Not for your body. Or what will you be wearing? Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothes. So the Gentiles are the ones who are not Jews of the faith of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel. So these people, they were the Gentiles. So whoever was not of the faith, of the Abrahamic faith, they were called Gentiles. So Jesus says to them, Certainly, certainly, your Father who is in heaven knows, your Father knows that you need them, you need all things. But seek first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be given to you. It is what we have been seeing. You have seen this. After you seek the kingdom of God, once a person prioritizes the kingdom of God, when a person places God in first in their life, so then they has everything that God has prepared for them. Every time that I say about God's kingdom, I think, for instance, in another scripture, old scripture, that clarifies even better, clarifies even better, it says, For the eyes of the Lord move about on all the earth to strengthen the heart, to strengthen the heart that is completely toward Him. So God, He can only show Himself strong to whom their heart is completely His. A heart that is completely to God is the heart that is turned to Him, a heart that is surrendered to Him. A perfect heart to God, I repeat, is a heart that is 100% devoted on the altar. So when you come on the altar, When you come on the altar, whenever you come to the altar, or today, tomorrow, Sunday, any other day, in fact, you that are going to be going to the altar, or you still, 
you still did not build your, your sacrifice, you have until the end of the month to build your sacrifice until the end of the month and to return, to give on the altar because all the bishops, pastors from all over the world they are going to be in one faith, agreeing in one faith, in one heart most will be at the temple of Solomon on the 7th on the 7th we are going to be at the temple of Solomon at 10 a.m. in the morning crying out to God and you will be able to join together in this special meeting because this meeting will be for the pastors, the auxiliaries, everybody and it's going to be open for public but people will be able to watch through Univer and through the website so on the 7th, on a Saturday 7th, 10 a.m. bishops and pastors will all be connected in one faith, seeking, crying out to God for the request of everybody. So, when a person prioritizes God, when they put God as first in their life, when they let go of the idolatry, let go of their old ways, of their images, when they let go of their pride, of their ego, when they let go of all the course, all the ways of the devil, when they pour down themselves and they clean themselves from the things of this world, beliefs of this world, and put Jesus as first in their life, so then what takes place comes upon them the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God comes upon them. The Spirit of the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit, will not enter in a person who does not have their life 100% to him or to his son. Will not. For example, just think with me. Just a matter of thinking. You that are a parent, if someone rejects your child, if someone rejects your child, your son, your daughter, will you accept them? Come on, tell me. Of course not. So, if your son, your daughter is rejected by anybody, what takes place? They are rejecting you who are a parent, yes or no? God is the same. Whoever rejects Jesus as first in their life is rejecting God. Is rejecting because the Holy Spirit cannot come in. That's why so many people, they pray, fast, come to church, cry, seeking Him, seeking, but they don't receive because not God's fault. It's their own fault because they didn't surrender. In one way, they lament and know their heart. God knows the intention of their heart. So, when you surrender 100%, when you surrender 100% to Jesus, the first thing that takes place in your life is for you to receive the Spirit of God. The Spirit who guided the Lord Jesus when He was here on earth and made Him an overcomer that made him to overcome even death, is the spirit of resurrection. So, my dear listener, he wants to be the first in your life. When he is the first in your life, so he satisfies you with all the, all the dreams, all your dreams will come true. David said, delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. And there is no delight in God than for you to give your life 100% to Him first, placing the Lord Jesus as first in your life. That's why at the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God, we have that sentence that says, Jesus Christ is the Lord on all of our altars. Jesus Christ is the Lord. So whoever seeks Him as Lord of their life will be blessed. Whoever does not do it will stay behind, will not see the greatness of his power. So, I want you to pay close attention 
to this song that is beautiful because all songs all songs that has body soul and spirit and this song that is well very well written and besides that it has a soul and above all it has a spirit it has a message and I'd like for you to pay attention to this song let us hear it My job, I was suicidal. Um, I was addicted to drugs. I had a failed marriage, and that caused me to be weak. And I gave up doing hair to return to school, and I tried to work part time, and not finding the right job because you didn't have the skill set. People wanted you to have like a reference of working, and I've always worked for myself, so I couldn't find a job. Um, at the time I was in a relationship, I was married. My husband at the time was the provider for the family. And during that marriage, it was a lot of cheating going on. And 
he cheated on me during the whole marriage. And when I got ready to get out the marriage, I didn't have anything to fall on. So that made me suicidal. Um, I wanted to take my life because I felt like my life was ended. I didn't have no outlet, no outreach. I didn't have no one to help me. And that caused me to be weak. The addiction, it was there before and I gave it all up. But when I started to lose everything, I thought that if I go back and just drown it out with drugs and alcohol, that I wouldn't have to worry about my life and where I was going. So I was trying to kill myself slowly. I smoked marijuana for like 25 years. I drank alcohol for 25 years. Um, I took pills for maybe like five years. I was very depressed. I would just lay on the couch. I didn't want to eat. Um, I didn't want to get up. I just laid there day in and day out. There was no peace in my home. I used to leave the house about five or six, go in the cemetery just to find the peace. To be beaten, battered, abused, molested, that's living in hell. Never ever having peace, never finding peace, um, never having joy, never really um, finding love. That's, that's living in hell. Well, when I came to the church, um, they spoke of the campaign of Israel, and it was more of testing your faith with God. And the campaign I sacrificed, um, I gave God really my all, um, my whole check, which was supposed to be for rent, but I gave the whole check. Um, sold a couple of equipment that we had, and I just gave it all. It was very hard because when I gave the whole check, I knew that was for my rent. I didn't know where any other income was going to come that next month. Um, so it was very hard for me to do, to give that whole check. Because of the campaign, I was able to open up a production company. Um, we were blessed with the equipment to start our business. A wonderful husband. I no longer have suicidal thoughts, and I just... I'm just, I'm happy. I'm full of joy. I don't think about any alcohol, any drugs. I don't crave any of that. Um, I just feel strong at this time. Before the campaign of Israel, I was weak because my son ran away from home. Uh, my son leaving the house, he left the house because he was, um, he didn't like the rules. He didn't like the rules. He didn't want to listen to us. So he was, I didn't know he was on drugs. He was using drugs and he wanted to be out there with his friends and ditching school and stuff like that. And um, he, um, he just got mixed in the wrong crowd, wrong people, wrong crowd. This is what he wanted to do to be out in the streets, to be free. He ended up uh, getting a rifle to try to rob somebody. Or, or getting guns, he was trying to get guns to do these things. I was hurt, I was hurt, I was destroyed inside and there was nothing I could do. He called me, he said, stop looking for me. Stop looking for me because you ain't gonna find me. You ain't gonna find me, I'm gone already. I already left uh, the state, I already left. I said, it's okay, Jeremiah, I'm not gonna find you, but God will, God will find you. That was the most hurtful thing he could tell me. And I prayed, and I remember praying and praying. He got locked up June, so he he went to jail, and I didn't know what else to do. The lawyer that we had didn't want to ask for the time that we're, he wanted me to ask him to take five years jail. And I said, no, my son's never been in trouble. I said, my God is with me. He's like, you don't know this judge. This judge is horrible. He's going to throw the book at him. I said, no, because my God is with me. Even my husband was against me. He said, no, let him take the five-year deal. We went before the judge, and the judge goes, I could give you 20 years, son. You want to ask for, for to go home? You know, even as bad as he was, this was my son. This is my flesh and blood. I can't give up. I'm not going to give up. I won't give up. The campaign came. I gave everything. I said, I have to give everything. They were talking to us and telling us. You know, I watched other testimonies of, of doing it all. After I made my sacrifice, um, we went to the judge. Well, we had to go to court. 
He said, if I want, son, I'll give you 20 years. You're asking to come home, he's, I'll give you 20 years. And I still, I was, I had to know God, that God, you're my judge, you're my everything. You're with me here right now. I said, there's no way he's going to give my son 20 years. No. So he said, I'm going to let you go. My heart dropped. My heart dropped. He said, you're going. You're going to go. I'll let you go. After the campaign, now my son is married. He's changed in his attitude and the things that he used to do, he don't do no more. He's like, he's grown up. <laughs> he's grown up. He has a job. He finished school. He finished school when he came out. He graduated. Um, after my sacrifice, instead of my son receiving 20 years, he was set free. So today now, uh, after that, all this has happened, I'm blessed now and my family's strong. I am strong. I am strong. What calls our attention many times is, is the way in which people express the sincerity of how they are saying what they did. And we spoke exactly what the scripture that we read, the word of the Holy Spirit to give you today is exactly this in regards to this that is upon this person's story because the scripture that says do not worry about this or that or don't be anxious with nothing of this world the most important thing is God's kingdom and his righteousness seek God's kingdom and his righteousness seek God's kingdom and the Holy Spirit, and everything will change, everything will be added unto you. And they stayed 10 years fighting and fighting, fighting against God, trying, trying to fool the altar, trying to fool God until, until they went to the bottom pit and then they understood that they needed to make the sacrifice. Because with God, my dear listener, there is no such thing as, as reserve or putting aside or plan B. I will try this. If it doesn't work, I have this in plan. No. Either all or nothing. Either all or nothing. I remember that when I, I left my work, I left two jobs that I had. I used to work in I used to work from seven to midday every day. And then after I wore I worked in the lottery of the state from midday until five thirty in the afternoon. It was two jobs that I had. And I would work. I worked two jobs that were safe. Nobody could actually fire me because they were they were settled. Nobody could fire me. But I gave that job that I nobody could fire me because of the faith and conviction that there was inside of me. So I sacrificed everything. And Esther and, her, and, and the child, our children, needed that money because it was the only source. I had, I had uh, the, the health insurance from as benefits for ourselves but I gave that I gave all that up and I had no plan B I didn't know what I was gonna do after because I believed this belief this faith this determination this dependence on God this dependence on God is what pleases him is what says there in scripture the scripture I read second Chronicles chapter 16 verse 9 says for the eyes of the Lord move about on all the earth to strengthen the heart that is completely toward him the heart that is completely him toward him so that he can move King David said delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart so we must please God first so that he can then please us when there is a true surrender of our part to the Lord Jesus then his spirit comes and changes everything in us is what took place with this person when they made the correct move when they made the correct move on the altar so then God's spirit came upon their life 
and transformed all the situation. Let us see more testimonies like this so that you can see and hear how it is the action of faith in God. Faith and intelligence go together. Although faith sounds crazy to this world, it's intelligent because it makes us know that we can be happy. Faith also keeps us from accepting a life of defeat and allows us to fight to conquer a life of victory and success. If nothing is going according to plan, it's time for you to use your intelligence and faith to bring to existence the desires of your heart. The Universal Church, a place of faith to change your life. The voice of fear, the voice of faith takes away your bad thought. The voice of faith brings a certain sweet calm, confidence within my soul that the victory will be achieved. Against the great storm, the house you'll never be. The voice of doubt, the voice of faith is the cell that never changed. The voice of faith brings the certain sweet calm, confidence within my soul that the beat will be achieved. Against the great storm, the house you'll never be in. The house you'll never be in. I was someone very lonely, paranoid. I had trust issues, I was rebellious, very angry, full of addictions, and I was a mess. Completely lost in my own actions. I had um, street conflicts, um, influences from different things such as music, look up to other people. Um, I was just completely destroyed. Like, even at school I was failing everything that I was doing. From a young age, from about 11 or 12, I was addicted to pornography. And from even before that, from about 10, I was addicted to music. So it was the things that really revolved around my life during that time especially. For example, with pornography, um, that escalated even more from about 13 to 14. That, it really struck me at night time, if I can say it. Sometimes I would even watch it to go to sleep, just so that it could take stress off my mind. Because I was very lonely, because especially being only child as well. So it's like, at night, I, I felt like I needed something to do. Um, the lowest point I'd say where, was when I um, came to hear about the help centre. And I knew there were addictions which kept on, if I can say, destroying me inside. But 
I still kept them because I felt like I was fine. It wasn't something that was doing anything to me, doing any harm. But it came to a point where I was in the health centre um, receiving some advice, some um, counselling, and it's like I knew it was wrong, but I couldn't let it go. So after a while, I was getting help and help and advice, and then I decided that I had to drop it because, first of all, it, it stopped me from sleeping at night, meant, meaning my grades were dropping and I couldn't do anything about it. The music was just um, kept giving me an adrenaline rush, so I kept on wanting it to do more stuff, more, more violence, more aggression, and it affected me everywhere, from times where I was playing football to the times I was in school, to where um, I was on the streets, to the times where I get conflict with other people. Even in the church, my thoughts would be aggressive and violent. So I, it came to a point where I was saying, it had to stop, because otherwise it would have taken me to another place. My mum told me about it, but I was quite reluctant at first. I, I didn't really go, I, I wasn't interested. To me, it's like, I didn't need it because I said I could do things by myself. I didn't need anyone's help. Um, it took quite a while for me to give it up. First of all, because me myself, I still wanted some of it, the pleasure and just the, the, um, the way it was. So the porn, eventually I got rid of it because it was a process for it. But it, it didn't, when I decided I wanted to let it go and to get rid of it completely, it didn't take a long time, but the music was something else because music was something that drove me, something that kept me going. Even, even though it was negative, to me it's something that I fed off. It gave me energy to do more, even though it was wrong, but to me it's something that I, I required. It was like drinking water to me. So I was coming to the help centre on Fridays to fight against all the negativity that was holding me back and also battling against my thoughts because I had violent thoughts due to the music and so on. So I came a lot of Fridays and Sundays to get the strength to overcome these things. And also Wednesdays to learn more about them, learn more of how I can overcome these things, because I knew I couldn't do it by my own strength. So I needed someone else, um, someone else to help me with that. And also I listened to the advice, I took them in, because I realised that all these addictions were only destroying me. And I came to a point where I said, you know what, I need to start accepting the advice. Um, since Overcoming and since really taking a decision to get rid of them, I've been clean from the addictions. Now it's been about one year and one year and five months since I've been clean from it. That's the porn and also the music, about one year, literally about a year. A year and, if I can say it, a year and four months. The advice I'd give to someone is that they have to realize that these things are not helping them in any way that there is a way out, that it's just not, it's not just normal. Because I'm sure if people will see that the behavior that they behave when they, when they listen to the certain type of music or when they do watch porn, people will see them as in it's not normal, it's unusual. But even though you won't realize it, eventually you end, someone else will um, start picking up the pieces for you and they will start to build the image for you and they'll show you. And in the end, it might, if you don't accept their help, it might be too late and it might end up putting you downhill. So you can see, you that are listening to this program and your life is in ruins, sick, disappointed, your marriage is destroyed, you got married with all the dreams in mind, but the dreams became nightmares from the moment you went to the honeymoon. You can change everything going on the altar. But of course, you need to go with your all. Is your life, is your broken life, with what you have, is your offerings, your life. Like the widow, the poor widow. She had everything and she brought to the altar. And that's why that woman came to be blessed. Certainly, she was blessed because the Lord Jesus made notice of that. The Lord Jesus noticed that and made this point out. And this happens to all those who act. But how come a person doesn't come on the altar? They don't come on the altar because of what people say against the church, against sacrifice, people that they are used by the devil to make people not to come on the altar. And the, the work is of God. The devil works to stop the work of God like he did with Jesus. Even in the Bible, 
Jesus was downgraded. Even in Jesus' time, he was downgraded. They called Jesus the chief of demons. The chief of demons. And the same happens today. But it's up to you to overcome. My sleepless night made me weak. My name is Augustine Andrews. I had sleepless nights for more than a year. I used to be tossing and turning all night, and unable to sleep. I've been going through those sleepless nights for so long, and I wanted was to make a change. I know that the sleepless night was not normal, because I need to sleep in order to go to work next morning and function properly. Day or night, I could not sleep at all. I needed help. I got up and started to watch TV, saw the bishop talking about people have similar symptoms like what I'm experiencing, sleepless night, uh, all sort of different problems they were having. And I decided to come to the church. The campaign came around. I went to the altar on that first campaign and I received like $30,000 in return and that's money I was not expecting at all. The same money that I was coming to me all these years, working on, with that same money, I'm doing much more now. I've been paying my bills on time. Before I couldn't pay my bills on time, I always had a late fee, late fee. Now the same money, I'm paying on time and I still have extra money. Since I went to the altar, yes, I did receive a financial blessing. Not only that, I also had a, got a peace of mind. I feel much better. I have no more sleepless nights able to sleep much better. I have a peace of mind, I'm stronger, and my life is better. Everyone who does not submit to God's word brings to themselves destruction to their life. Even though they have faith, goals, and dreams, if there is no obedience to God's word, they will certainly be rejected by God. God sees the heart and recognizes those who fear Him and keep their word. And these are the ones who want eternal life, are humbling themselves, repents from their wicked ways, and seek the throne of grace and mercy of God. The Universal Church, empowering lives with the Word of God.
sure as seasons are made for change, our lifetimes are made for years. So I, I will be here. I will be here. And you can cry on my shoulder when the I know that your eyes are always watching over me. And your ears are always eager to hear my prayer, even if I may cry. I know that you are by my side When you are near me I'm never lonely Just as promised You never change God of Abraham God of promise, you swore by yourself to change my life. I know your word is true, for this I trust in you. Lord, make your words be real in me. I know that you're right. Are always watching over me And your ears Are always eager to hear my prayer Even if I may cry I know 